Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some buttery white cheddar rosemary dinner rolls. So let's get started. First off, in the bowl of my stand mixer, I'm adding one cup of warm whole milk. That should be between 110 and 120 Fahrenheit. I also want one packet of active dry yeast. That's two and a quarter teaspoons or seven grams. And to give these yeast a little bit of a welcome home so they can wake up with a smile, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of sugar. We're gonna give this a mix and just set this aside until it's nice and foamy. If it's not nice and foamy, toss it out and start over again. Your yeast might have expired, just aren't active enough anymore, and it's not gonna work. Okay, while my yeast are waking up, I have just a little bit of prep work to do, starting off by grating two cups or 226 grams of a nice sharp white cheddar. To be honest, you could use any cheddar you like, but the white cheddar will look nice because you won't have like orange specks throughout. By the way, this recipe is from the winter chapter of my book, so if you have a copy, pull it out and turn to page 110 as you bake along. My milk's starting to foam up, the cheese is shredded. The last thing I need to do is mince up my fresh rosemary. This gives you so much flavor and a lovely aroma, and it really helps these rolls pair with basically anything. We're gonna pull all these leaves off. We don't wanna cut up the stem, it's too woody, and the flavor is not there. I'm gonna give this a really nice mince so we have tiny little pieces of rosemary throughout, not big giant pieces that you're chewing on. I don't know why I chose the comically small cutting board for this, but I did. And I'm gonna stick by it. You wanna end up with two tablespoons of minced rosemary, so if you're not a fan, you could actually omit this, it'll be fine. Those will be a delicious cheesy cheddar dinner rolls. La la la, chop a chop chop. All right, now for some of the fun stuff. We're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar, it's 50 grams. I like to mix things in by hand before popping it on the mixer. I'll tell you why afterwards. Half a cup or 113 grams of unsalted melted butter. Mmm, the butter makes everything better. I'm gonna crack two eggs right into that bowl just to check for shells. We don't want a crunchy moment here. And yes, these get brushed with butter afterwards at least once. Scale aside for a minute. Let's mix this up until it's nice and combined. Perfect. Now we're gonna add two cups or 240 grams of bread flour. In you go. If you really wanted to use all-purpose flour, you could use all-purpose flour. And one teaspoon of salt for contrast. Now I'm gonna whisk the flour in, and this is what I love doing with any enriched dough you usually add the flour to like a buttery milk mixture in a couple batches. But it takes your mixture like a good deal of time to work that initial bit of flour in. So just do it with your whisk. And now we have a wonderful, it's a really good smelling mixture. Now we're gonna add the remaining 330 grams of flour in, or two and three quarter cups. <laughs> My scale is done. Grab your mixer with a dough hook and we're gonna let our mixer do the work for us now. Did I ever tell you a funny little story about the importance of reading a recipe, even if you wrote the recipe yourself? <laughs> so here's the deal. I was thinking of another bread recipe when I was just autopiloting through this and I'm supposed to add the flour in a quarter of a cup at a time while the mixer is running, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I didn't start mixing it, so I was gonna take out almost all the flour and add it in slowly. And the next time, I'm gonna double read that recipe all the way through. <laughs> take two. So I have this on my lowest setting, and I'm just gonna add this in like a heaping spoonful at a time. That's about a quarter of a cup. But it's gonna take a while. <laughs> so <laughs> Maybe you read a book on the side, but it'll take a little bit. It's like you're making a meringue where you're slowly adding that sugar in so that it can dissolve in the egg whites. Same thing, but now we're slowly adding the flour in so it can dissolve into this lovely matrix of yeast, butter, and milk. My flour is mostly incorporated. I'm adding in the next, you know, about a quarter of a cup. The flour doesn't have to completely incorporate. We're just, you know, taking our time a little bit. This is in a mix for about 12 minutes or so, starting from your first addition of that quarter cup of flour. So just give it some time. It'll turn into a lovely, beautiful, stretchy dough, but it's very enriched, so it still will be sticky. I'll show you how sticky and how stretchy it should be. 
when we're back with the magic of editing. <laughs> Before I show you what it looks like after, this is what it looks like right now. So it's coming together, but take a look at this. If I pull it apart, it has no structure. It just kind of breaks. I want to see a lovely stretchy tacky dough. It does smell good though. So when we come back, you'll see it's so much stretchier, so much silkier and suppler. But right now, it's just in a knead on its own. Let's give it 10 more minutes. Sometimes your mixer wants to be a little difficult and you have this like little like blurb of uh, dough that's just kind of going around the sides. That's today. I don't know if it's because it's snowing or what, but this is getting closer. I'm just gonna finish kneading it by hand. I wanna show you some things too. Because if you didn't have a dough, like if you don't have a stand mixer, you could make this with a hand mixer with the dough hooks, but chances are you're gonna wanna do a little bit of kneading by hand. So just going to get a nice texture here. You can see the dough is much smoother, but what I'm looking for is the stretch test. So if I take a little bit of the dough and I stretch it out, it shouldn't break right away. It's still breaking a little bit too much. I know I have to develop the gluten more. I'm gonna knead this by hand just for a few minutes. I actually find kneading to be really relaxing. Some people are not into it. <laughs> After a couple of minutes of kneading, you can see I can just stretch this dough out so far and actually you can see light coming through the dough. That's the window pane test, so I know it's nice and perfect. This is ready to rise if you want a boring old delicious buttery dinner roll, but we're adding some cheddar and rosemary. So it's gonna go back to the mixer where it should have been the whole time. Now we're gonna add the cheddar in. Get to mixing. And while it cuts that cheese in, I'm gonna sprinkle in my rosemary just so it's nice and well distributed. So I'm actually making this video in time to have this syrup with dinner and I'm making like a delicious roasted chicken with like butter and tarragon throughout with some roasted carrots. And this is gonna have these cheesy dinner rolls on the side and the kids are gonna go crazy. Yeah. This recipe is in the book, but if you wanna make that roasted chicken, which is so good, that video is on the channel and on the blog too. It's time to grab a big bowl, add a little bit of oil, just get that nice and lubricated. Just gonna knead it a couple times by hand so I can be sure there's not like a giant clump of cheese hanging out someplace. Plop that in, cover it up, and we're gonna let this rise in a nice warm, cozy place for about 45 minutes or until it's doubled in size. So after 45 minutes, my dough has doubled in size. It looks gorgeous but it needs to be divided into 12 equal pieces. I'm gonna divide this into quarters and divide the quarters into three because four times three is 12. <gasps> Math lesson in baking. All right, so now we're gonna gather the corners in and use your thumb and middle finger, making a little okay sign kind of, and just crawl these with little small circular motions into a beautiful dinner roll shape. As you shape your dinner rolls, place them into your butter dish, nine by 13, and continue the process. So pinch the corners and roll them up. You don't wanna have any flour on your countertop right now. If you do, the rolls just slide around. They really need to maintain contact with your counter to get that beautiful shape when you twirl them around. By the way, if you like my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I upload on Tuesdays and Thursdays every week, so there's always gonna be a delicious recipe for you to try out. All right, last one. Loosely cover your container, and these will rise again for about 30 to 45 minutes or until they've puffed up and almost doubled in size. While they rise, set your oven to 350. My rolls have doubled in size. They look amazing, but before they go into the oven, I'm gonna brush them with a beaten egg. It's gonna give them a golden brown, beautiful, shiny finish. My rolls are ready to bake. 350 for 25 minutes or until they're golden brown. While they bake, melt some butter up. Once your rolls are out of the oven, liberally brush with melted butter. Finish them off with a sprinkle of minced rosemary and a smattering of flaked sea salt. Let them cool for 10 minutes and then look at that pull apart. Mm. It's like a cheesy rosemary pillow with butter. I hope you get a chance to make these rolls 
grab a copy of the book if you don't have one already. And if you like this video, check out my book playlist.